So this is the flail bar removed from the brot. That's the um, that's the pulley end. It sits under the right hand side that drives the flail. It goes through a pillow block, transmission of the power, and into this flail head. The pillow blocks um, were quite loose. So I got replacement inserts and just to pull them off, I've just got a normal puller. So I don't know how clear this will be. Just so that nothing slips off and hurts me, I've got it wrapped up in a cloth. Just they have a tendency to slip sideways. I've already broken the seal on this one, I brought it out a bit before I started recording, so... Got a good fit on the shaft. We're almost out. That's it. Let's pull this down. look at swapping this one out I can feel it is meant to rotate like this but it's it's loose in this direction so I'm hoping it's just the bearings are loose and not the uh, outer rim just give the end of the shaft a clean up So in here on the shaft, it's got a bit of wire wrapped around it, so I'm going to have to get a chisel and cut that off. That's freed it up and it just slides off then. That's all a bit of uh, wire that must have been hanging out in the lawn wherever this mower was used. Plastic coated wire, still in good nick, but not great on a shaft I'm trying to tidy up. So it's a one inch shaft, let's get that wet and dry again. Here's the old bearing. If I rotate that like that, somehow, somewhere, just slides out. Oh, no, first of all, I can see that's not good news at all. There's a fracture running across that bearing. So that one is, oh, and it's pretty loose, pretty loose. So I've got some inserts, brand new. So I'm hoping these will just swap straight in. They are pretty pretty similar. I'll give that a clean up first. This stage, I really only want to clean up the inside, and then later on, it does fit okay, and it's not all crushed out. And give it a better clean. You can see inside there, grease nipples on the outside comes through this little hole and runs around in this ring here. grease that is and then that should marry up with this ring here and then go into the bearing through this little hole here that's the concept so the grease that's in the groove is quite clean and the inside there doesn't appear too bad
Now these bearings, I don't know what speed they spin at. A good few thousand RPM, maybe? Same speed as the engine, I imagine, because the pulleys, the way the pulleys are arranged, are pretty much all the same throughout, so it seems to spin pretty much the same speed as the engine. So let me see if this fits. I'll get a little bit of clean grease in there just so that it helps it in. See if that fits. A bit of Castrol LM grease for no reason other than this is the grease that I have in the shed. So that's in there. And it's got these two chunks taken out of each side, one here and one here. So the bearing comes in from that side and it must go in and this this sticky out bit must be on the other side when it gets in there so put it in like that and rotate it like that and you know what that's a pretty good fit and then it's got this little cutout section up here beside the grease nipple in the top so you can tighten up your allen key I guess that's the that's how you replace the um, the inserts in your pillow block bearings. The other thing I didn't mention is it has this little nub that sticks out, and that stops the bearing race rotating within the pillow block casting. It just holds it in whatever side you put it in. So now I've moved around to the other side, and it's a bit more of a challenge because I've got to get this little pin out. I'm hoping it's just the standard Allen key fitting. Yeah, it should. If everything is okay, it should just come out. Ah, there it is. Doesn't look like we've got any wire wrapped around on this side. And that bearing's not not as bad as the other side, but it's not perfect, so I'm gonna do the inserts on both sides, which is just a good idea anyway. So because this is taking a long time, get a couple of pieces of wood. Just to give you a bit better purchase on the Allen key. does get you to start out. So that's it unscrewed. I'll just leave it in the end there. Now, there's no hole drilled in the end, so if I put the pullers on it, it's going to be difficult. I've got a three-way pullers. Really, I need to try and wedge out that little key first. So, I've got a screwdriver that's been used has more than a screwdriver against its wishes. So I've got some bigger chisels, some other small chisels. Let's see if these make a dent on it. Nope. I'm gonna end up mashing off the head of that jib key, which is not great. You want to do that the more I pound on it the more it's just gonna get mashed off Just 
give it better faces to work with. That's it. Jib key removed. And that's what it looks like. And that's the little hole where the Allen key goes in, the grub screw. Allen key is a grub screw. So with that done, let's get the grub screw back in and let's get, get on with getting this pulley and pillow block bearing off the end. Let's get a bit of pressure on that. That's the bit where it goes doing, flies off. Just absorb some of the impact if it does decide to go spring. No, I can see it moving. It's coming off. This is pretty good. It is never normally this easy. No, I've run out of travel on my pullers. You can see there it's come off about half an inch. That's where my finger is. So I guess I've got about another three quarters of an inch to an inch to travel out. I wonder if that would work there. Nice. It's not good for the pulley, but it is moving, so I'm not trying to break anything. Yeah, it's moving. It's better than whopping it with a hammer, that's for sure. Oh, we're nearly at the end of travel on this one. Right, that's that, that one. So we've come out a long way, right. We are nearly there. That's it. So there's the pulley. That's where the jib key went into that little channel slot there. Next thing is this bearing. And here is grub screw on it. So this is a different size grub screw to the other one and Maybe it's not, it's a bit loose, that one. Might be a metric one. Let's try 3 now. Oh. Yep, that's it. Oh, it's good and tight. I don't really want to break my, I'm gonna break my keys. This is an old rusty set of accessories for a little handheld screwdriver, or something like that. means I can get a little socket or something on it. That's it. 
that's it. That's that out. Sometimes there's two. Yep, another one over here. And that one just lifts straight out. No need to break that one. So, if this was the easy, easy world, that would just pull straight off. But it isn't. So, let's see if we've got enough travel in this one. I don't have no thread. No, that's not going to do it. There's nothing to grip. I'm just on the butt ball bit there. So this one, this has long and short left and right, the whole shebang, so I'm going to have to turn one of these over. Because I don't want to be on this center one, so take both of them out. this side first before I turn it over. See if we can get a grip. Yeah, it should do. Wow, it's pretty close. So that's it on. like it's moving. It's not centered properly. It's just wandering off the edge of the shaft there, so it could sit up a bit better. See that nice shiny bearing insert inside? What I'm going to do is turn these over. There's a long arm, arm and a short arm. Slightly longer. See? Slightly longer. Tonight, it's couscous and chicken for dinner. Courtesy of yours truly. Seems a bit better. Walking around a bit to the edge there. Seems a bit better like that, right? Let's wrap it up like that. How's it going? Come on. Come on. Not a sausage. There's a good seal of rust in there. Just like the blades of any old lawnmower, right? Yeah.
normally you put the pullers on tighten it up and hit something with a hammer to try and crack the seal I'll give that a go Now obviously that's not centered. Quite a bit of force in there. I'm gonna hit that with a hammer somehow. I don't know if that made a blind bit of difference. It's actually completely off the edge there. Let's back it up. Wow, we're on pretty good. Again. We're better centered that time, but we're still not breaking it. So that's a little piece of the bearing cover or something's fallen off. I need to get a hammer somehow right in there, try and whop it. Yeah, I don't know if that's making any difference. That's not getting any looser. I've taken out the grease nipple. That um, gives me a bit more of a straight line to get the bearing colors on it.
gone loose. I'm not sure why. So it's just it doesn't seem to be moving. Pretty weird. Try again. Maybe it is moving. Wrap it up because I can see these things pinging off, causing me an injury. There's quite a bit of pressure on it already, so just just as an arrestor. Definitely under pressure. Definitely turning. It's wandered off center, but it's still on the end of the shaft, so. Ah, it is. It's definitely moving now. That's that's something. Okay, it is moving. So let's slacken it up. Straighten it up. Put on a bit of something to to grease it up. It's moved. It's moved about a, an eighth of an inch, maybe. So that's positive. Let's put a bit of. WD on it. Might help. So it has moved in here, you can see just a slight amount that it's moved.
felt like I had something there. But... It is, it's, it is coming on, little by little. That's good, it's shifted. That's it, we're rocking and rolling now. This is the end of my travel. And we're off, great. So you can see it was, I don't know if it's fair to say it's seized on, but certainly had a good old crust on there. So the keyway only goes about as far as where the bearing begins. So here's the bearing, but a bit of side to side play, not much, but because of pulling it we have a bit of in and out play now, which doesn't give me the greatest of confidence, and I'm hoping that's in the bearing. So here's the bearing out, I'll clean it up, and uh, well actually let's have a look at this first. So there's no up and down play in that, that's actually very, well it's not smooth, but it's not got much play. It does have a bit of, and I'm rocking it, kind of up and down in the picture. You can feel play there. So, I'll get the, I'll get it cleaned up and uh, see how I get on. So I've got my two bearings tidied up. And I've got two new bearings to play with. Somewhere. So because of this notch here the hex key or the grub screw side must end up on that side and the little pin must end up in one of the two bushes or two cutouts so it's just as simple as that but when it's in there's a huge amount of play in that and I couldn't possibly use that so let's try the other one. I think the other one was the first one to come off. There's a bit of play. So not, I'm not 100% happy with them. I've got two other ones. That, um, that were on the jack shaft and they have a different type of grease nipple on them. So one of them at least is exactly the same. They're both exactly the same but they're both, um, this one is an Asahai bearing, this one is just a generic RHP is what it says. So, 
they feel a lot snugger but they have grease on them so i'm gonna clean this one out and see what it comes out like because i think it was in quite good condition i just wanted to replace it because there's a lot of load going on that lay shaft so i've given the other two a bit of a general clean up and there's more side to side play than yeah, there's a bit of there's a bit of every kind of play in that one not great the thing about these bearings and pillow blocks is they were out on the bottom of the lawnmower subjected to as much as they're likely to ever get in terms of you know lawn clippings and that kind of abuse so it's already much tighter it's not it's not like it's not completely tight they're still they're still playing it but i don't know really what i'm here. I wonder if it was greased up. I'd have to read up on this. Come back to it later. So let's pair them off again. So that I know which one's which. Back these up again. 